Now let's uh, have prayer and we'll, we'll begin. Now, Father, I pray that you will bless this scripture to us and help us to glean from it something that will help us in our lives. And Lord, we uh, know that uh, one thing we need in our life is faith. And I pray that you'll help us to uh, continue on this journey. We have some guys here for the very first time ever. And I pray, Lord, that we will all open our hearts to you tonight and receive something spiritual from you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm focusing on verse number 13 tonight, which I find to be an awesome verse of Scripture. It says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, they were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So they came to a certain mindset that said, you know what, I'm just passing through. And uh, that's the name of my message tonight, I'm just passing through. And when you get that kind of a mindset, your perspective is different. Now, I do believe that we all have a different perspective. And it's that certain mindset that more or less directs our lives. And my thinking is that in this group of people, the mindset that mostly directs your life or has in the past is that of pleasure. All I can do is I'm looking for pleasure, anywhere I can get pleasure, whatever it is that makes me feel like I have pleasure, that's what I'm after. And of course, you guys know, who do I need to tell, that that didn't work. And uh, this doesn't work so pretty good. So <clears throat> I'm saying you have to have a different mindset. Now some people, their mindset is, how much stuff can I accumulate? And uh, that seems to be uh, the way it is in America anyway, because this is the land of the free and the home of the brave, and none of us are free because we're always slave to the stuff. You know, you don't own stuff, it owns you. And uh, you have to, and the pursuit of it just never satisfies. It doesn't work very well. How much is enough? Just a little bit more, right? And that's the way we uh, think in our society. In other places, it's different. Uh, people are trying to do various things to try to satisfy whatever that longing is in your heart that says, this is my pursuit. Well, these people, it says that they, they didn't have receiving the promises. What promises? Well, they didn't know about the Messiah. They didn't know about salvation hardly. They didn't know about Jesus for sure. They didn't know about the things to come. These are all way back in the Old Testament. And, but they did know that there was something going on. They did know that afar off, I see, I grasp, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to embrace it. And I know it's have to do with God, and I'm, I, I don't quite have it figured out, but I'm going to embrace it. And it says that they uh, confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What a great place to be to figure that out in your life, that this life really isn't all there is. And uh, if you think it's all there is, then, you, you know, you're shortchanged to yourself. Now, our lives are just, well, the Bible says a vapor. And uh, it's just, we're just here a little while and gone for a little while. And, uh, and before long, you know, whatever happened to, oh, what's his name? I don't know. He's gone, you know. And even the most famous people, it doesn't take long, a week or two, and we kind of forgot about them. But in our whole big scheme of things, this life is just a little dot in all of eternity. And to grasp that helps you prepare for the next life. Not only that, but it helps you to work better in this life because your perspective is different. Now, we talked about Abel here, and it says this man Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than his brother Cain. Now, we know the story of Cain and Abel. Here's what happened. Cain and Abel were offering sacrifices to God. Abel was doing it God's way, which required a blood sacrifice. Cain said, well, you know what? I'm not all about that blood. I think I'm just going to plant some flowers. And uh, he was kind of a, he was a, a snowflake today. That's what we might call him, right? So he's planting flowers and fruit, and he's going to offer this to God. But that wasn't what God told him to do. It says, by faith, 
Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. And the Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So somewhere he got the instruction. But Cain said, no, I'm going to do it my own way. Well, I'm thinking, here's what that is. That's, that's just an expression of your own personal religion. Because we're always making up our own religion, right? Well, this is the way I think things ought to be. This is what I think ought to happen. And uh, that's why we have so much stinking religion in the world. And for those of you, this is your first time here, I'm going to tell you this. Religion is your enemy. Religion will keep you from reaching God. Because our problem is we embrace religion instead of looking past it and finding God. God didn't invent religion. We did. Here's this guy, Cain. He uh, invented uh, his own religion. I'm going to make up my own sacrifice. And uh, the Bible says that God wasn't happy with his sacrifice. And so Cain, very interesting story in Genesis chapter 4. Here's what happened. It says that God said to him, hey, Cain, you look angry. What's the matter with you? He knew what was the matter with him, right? Of course, God knows what's, what's the matter with you. And uh, so he said, be careful, Cain. This is a very cool point. He said, be careful. Sin lies at the door. Now, you're unhappy right now, but you haven't sinned yet. But it's right here in front of you. You can take the right hand or you can go to the left. If you take the wrong stroke, the, the, then you're going to fall into sin. If you do this right, then you'll, you'll turn out better. And he didn't. Here's what he chose to do. He killed his brother. <laughs> well, that worked. His anger was vented on his own brother, and he killed his brother. And God said, what have you done? He said, where's, where's your brother Abel? Am I my brother's keeper? He said, well, the answer is yes, you are. Actually, if you don't have that relationship business figured out, then you're a little bit screwed up. So what did Abel do? Abel did it God's way. Abel reached God. Cain reached the depth. Now, here's what I'm saying to you. If you want to make this thing, get this figured out, you've got to reach God. And you can't do it through religion. You got to do it aside from religion. In fact, the, the way religion works is it takes a little piece of truth, then you wrap 20 pounds of baloney around it, and then we, we're going to call that religion. And you can't get to the truth for the religion. It's all baloney, so much of it. And religion, listen to this, always evolves beyond truth. That's the way it works. So we've got this guy, Abel, and here's what I like about him. He did it God's way. Now we've got this guy, Enoch, and it says Enoch, at verse uh, number five, he was translated that he should not see death. He wasn't found because God had translated him. This is the first guy that ever got beamed up, right? He was walking with God, and God said, I like this guy, man. He's got, he's got it going on here, this guy, this guy Enoch. And he walked with God. I mean, how do you do that? I don't, I, I can't even grasp this, what it was to just God and Enoch walking along one day. And God said, Enoch, you know, you're so far close to my house and you're so far away from yours. Why don't you just come on home with mine? And the Enoch said, I like it. It's a good thing. And he just went on to heaven with God. How cool is that? What does it take to get there? Nobody's done it since. Let's just put it that way. But I like this guy because he lived in a time when, when the world was wicked. It was aw awful. It was so bad that within a chapter or two, God would destroy the world with a flood because of the wickedness of man. It says every imagination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. They never had a good thought. All they ever thought about was pleasure, satisfying myself. That's all they ever thought about. It's all about me. It's not about you. It's not about God. It's all about me. Enoch pleased God. Now, I, I, I'm just asking you, do, doesn't it make sense you might want to do that? I mean, if God is able to do all that we say he is, he, he, he controls your next heartbeat. He gives you your next breath, right? He can wipe you out or take you home. Either way, it just makes sense to me. You might want to have him on your side. 
Does that make sense to you? Especially when you need him so bad. I think God designed life to where we would all need him sooner or later. And this is your later. Uh, here you are. You need him whether you know it or not. Maybe you'll get it figured out. There's another guy in here named Abraham it talks about. And uh, we've got this guy named Noah also. And uh, let me, I'm um, taking this in sequence. Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet. What had he not seen as yet? He, he was warned of something he hadn't seen yet. What was that? Rain. Hadn't rained before. Noah said, it's going to rain to the guys. And they said, what's rain? He said, I don't know. But God's warning us, it's going to come. And he said, you got to go build a boat. And uh, you know what happened, don't you? They said, what are you, nuts? You're not one of those Jesus guys, are you? <laughs> come on, man. Like, you know, all you have to do is pray over your meal and somebody will call you deacon. Right? Ridicule. That's, all, that's what the world does. Ridicule. We prayed over our food one night over here at the Three Coins Diner. There were about six or eight of us. And we were sitting there and we prayed over the food. And guess what happened? Somebody picked up the tab. We don't even know who it was. They said, we like that. I said, well, there you go now. There you go. I don't care what you think about me. I'm over that. And you got to get over that too. You got to get over what other people might think about you or call you because you're pursuing God. What you call them is losers. The guy that's running out front, nobody talks against uh, the guy in the back. It's always the guy that's in front that gets kicked, right? Well, get out there, man. Noah said, I don't care what they say about me. Noah building a boat. Noah, it's going to rain. What is? I don't know. Well, what? You looks like an idiot out there in the middle of the desert building a boat. Don't you know they talked about him? Because that's the way. That's the way people are. Here's what people do. They love to criticize because it makes them look better. If I can criticize you, it makes me feel better about my own sorry existence, <laughs> which is the way it is. Now we've got this guy, Abraham. What did he do? Well, it says he was as good as dead and he had a kid. And when that means as good as dead, it means his, all of his parts might not have been working so good anymore because he was really old. Now, I can relate to that, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but it's said that Abraham was more interested in finding favor with God than he was with his family. He said to his wife, we're going to move. Where are we going? I don't know. How we know when we get there? I don't know. Well, what, what's, what's going to happen? To I don't know. But pack up and we're going. When we get there, God's going to tell us. And he took his nephew with him. And he shouldn't have done that. But he didn't care about the family. Now, somebody needs to care about your family because they're out for your best interest. Some folks are not out for your best interest. How many of you in here have some addiction problem because of your family? Let me see your hand. Oh, see that, see that, see that. My, uh, we have a friend that meets us every uh, uh, Thursday night over at our house, and uh, his name's Kenny Rogers. And Kenny came to the group the other day, and he said, I got a problem. I want to honor my mother, but I don't know how to honor my mother. She's a drug addict, and every time we talk on the phone, she wants to give me drugs. She wants me to go over to her house. She wants me to get drunk. She, uh, she's got my brother. He's totally addicted, and she just keeps giving him money. Is this enough money for the night, honey? You know. And she, he said, I don't know what to do with my mother. She'll turn me into a drug addict if I let her. That's a sad state, isn't it? Man alive, I don't remember my mom like that. Do you? Uh, that's just... But you can't care. If you're going to care about what somebody thinks of you, you have to care about what God thinks of you. And if you get that settled in your mind, if you get that settled, you're on the right pursuit. If all you're doing is just trying to live your life and pass the time and uh, have as much fun as you... Somebody asked me, why does God allow so much pain? Why is there so much suffering in the world? And you know, I thought about that and I said to myself, 
why is there so much pleasure in the world? Why does God allow that? Why does God allow so much selfishness in the world? Why does God allow so much choice? Why doesn't he just shut this whole thing down and, and clean it all up? And then I finally realized <coughs> it's scheduled. He's got a plan. And we're heading there at breakneck speed. In the Old Testament, there's a guy named Daniel. And Daniel had his allegiance with God. And uh, I'm saying that uh, that's where we, we ought to have our allegiance. Our allegiance ought to be with God. And he chose God over, even over the government. You remember this in, in, in the end of the book of John, for some of you who know the Bible. He... he he said to Peter, he was trying to test Peter. Remember what he said to Peter? He said, Peter, do you love me? How many guys know this story? He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, then I want you to feed my sheep. No, 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 no. He said uh, again the second time, Peter, do you love me the second time? He said, yes. He said, then feed my... And three times he said that, and three times Peter got kind of embarrassed because I think what Jesus was doing was... Testing his level of commitment. Because here's what happened. He even discussed with him the fact that he would die a martyr's death. In that same chapter. He, uh, die a martyr. Uh, where, where are you with that? You know, if, if, are you okay with that in your own life? I mean, man, that's a big deal, isn't it? Because Peter was about to launch the church. This guy had to be pretty serious about his commitment, didn't he? Well, that's the way Daniel was. Daniel said, I don't care. Let the king rot. I don't care. I'm going to do what God says to do, and I don't care about the rest. And um, Peter, we know what he did. He ended up, got up, and did the right thing. I like the way the, they say it here. We've we got to do the next right thing. I like that. I, I like that a lot. That works for me. And that's what Daniel did. His allegiance was God, and at the end he made a good choice. Now, in the New Testament, there's a little woman. We call this the widow, and she gave her might. The widow's might. Have you heard this story? Hold your hand if you know this story. Let me see your hand. Okay, here's what happened. It says that Jesus was standing over against the treasury. So here's what's happening. They're receiving an offering. And uh, I think offerings are... A measure of our devotion to God, you know, our measure of our uh, appreciation for what God has done for us, just um, because it all belongs to him anyway, you do know that. Uh, it, it's all his. He just loaned you some and to uh, see how you do. So he's observing the, uh, uh, the people putting money into the treasury. And he saw this little widow, she came along, and she put this little mite in. And a mite, you know how much, what, uh, it, it's not much. And it happened to be the last she had. Because Jesus took note of it. He said, I'm going to tell you the truth. This, this woman gave more than all the rest. Because she gave 100%. You know, there's only three numbers mentioned in the Bible. 10%, 50% Zacchaeus, and 100% this woman. So you get to pick which number you like the best. And you get to do that, you see. And so he said, this woman gave it all. And if you were going to ask her today, hey, have you lost your mind? You're putting everything you have and you're honoring God with it. You know what she would say? I'm just passing through. I'm not here to stay. My priorities are above here. This is not my final stop. And I'm just making preparation for the next one. Because sooner or later, you're going to be standing before God, right? Sooner or later, God's going to judge you. And uh, that can go a couple of ways, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And this one said, God, Jesus said, this one's a hero. She said, yeah, I, I, I get it. I'm just passing through. I'm thinking also about Peter and John. And here's what they did. Uh, it, they got out and got in trouble because they were not obeying the law of the land. Instead, they said, we ought to obey God rather than man. Because they said, look, you're spreading this message. We, we don't want you doing that. You see, I, 
I go to North Africa. Last uh, month I was in front of 15 Muslim converts. Every one of them, their lives are at risk in their countries, five different countries, in their villages. Every one of them, if it gets out that they're believe, every one of them is evangelistic. They're out sharing their faith, even though it's against the law. You see, just because it's legal doesn't mean you ought to do it. You know what I'm saying? At some point, you have to make a choice. Uh, pot's legal. Is that a good idea for you guys? I'm just asking. Alcohol runs like a river in our country. It's the only disease they tax. You'll figure that out. About three in the morning, you'll go, what? But just because it's legal doesn't mean you ought to do it. Understand this? you got to make some choices along the way. you got to decide. And these guys, Peter and John, if you were to say, guys, don't you know they're going to beat you? They did. They beat them. They beat them because I don't know why. They just thought it would shut them up. It didn't shut them up. And I, I think they would say, you know what? We just got beat, but we're just passing through here anyway. I remember this old evangelist. Somebody threatened to kill him. There's always somebody who wants to kill somebody, you know, just, I don't know why. And this guy said, I'm going to kill you. He said, you can't threaten me with heaven. That's not much of a threat. You know, let's go, man. Bring it. Send me. I'm ready. That's a good place to be, isn't it, in your head? I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world does. I don't care what's legal. And Paul said this in the New Testament. He said, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. I just can't do them because they're legal. Because I got news for you. We live in a depraved world. We have depraved laws. Some are good, some not so good. We've got stupid laws on the. I mean, did you know it's against the law to break an eagle's egg? Did you know that? You break an eagle's egg, you're going to jail. But it's perfectly all right to kill an unborn baby. <sighs> I can't get there. Paul lost his peers. Paul was something going on with Paul. He had it going on until he all of a sudden had a conversion experience. Now listen to this. He had a conversion experience. You know what I mean? He met Jesus. It changed him. Oh, by the way, I think change is one of those things you're looking for. Some kind of change here, right? He met Jesus and all of a sudden <laughs> lost all his friends. Now every place he used to go and have friends, now they go there and, and they stone him. And they beat him, and they try to kill him. And over and over again, he's trying to get, rather have favor with God than to have favor with man. Rather have favor with God than to have favor with his religion, because he was exceedingly religious. And uh, I think he would say very simply, I, I just got to tell you this, I'm just passing through. I'm not here to stay. This world isn't it. There's something better coming. Well, that's called hope. If you believe, you know, if you need hope, there's something better coming. Yeah. I'm thinking of John the Baptist. He stood in front of the king one day who was having an immoral experience. And John the Baptist said, you're doing it. You're committing adultery. Something wrong. Well, you don't. You got to be careful when you're in front of the king. You know. And they took him out and they said, uh, <clears throat> "That's it, man. You committed the unpardonable sin in front of the king." And they cut his head off. Now, you know, it's not always easy to do the right thing. It's not always easy to say the right thing. And he said. <laughs> can't threaten me with heaven. <laughs> John the Baptist, this guy, this evangelist's name, I told you his name was John. That's kind of neat. I actually went to his funeral and uh, a, a 
big shot preacher got up and he gave this guy's eulogy, we would say, and he read from the Gospel of John verse in chapter 1. He said this about him. He said, there was a man sent from God named John. Well, that's cool. Good thing to say at a guy's funeral named John, isn't it? And John the Baptist would say, look, man, I'm just passing through here. I, 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 that's where I'm going. I'm not just here to... It's all about that and, and very little about this. I just don't want to screw this up. It's a good place to be. The disciples were out fishing one day. Hadn't caught anything. Jesus came up and said, fellas, you're fishing on the wrong side of the boat. Now, <coughs> those of you who know about fishing, you know, you've been fishing... What would you say to that? You know, this guy, a carpenter, comes out and says, you guys are fishing on the wrong side. What would you do with that? You'd say, some of you, right? What does this guy know about fishing? Right? And they said, we know better than you do, but nevertheless, because you said it, we'll try it. And they put the nets on the other side, caught all kinds of fish, went crazy with it. And here's what I like. They said, nevertheless, at your word, we will do it. Now, here's what I'm saying to you. That's a good place to be. You may not understand the word, but it's a good thing to practice. <coughs> I don't get it. You don't have to get it. If you could get it, you'd be like God, wouldn't you? He, I, I got to tell you this. He's got us at a disadvantage He's smart, and we're not. Sometimes we do all right, but most of the time we're shooting in the dark. They said, at your word, we will." I'm saying to you, the success that you will have if you don't embrace this book, you're going to shortchange yourself. And that's kind of what we're going to try to do over here at Vocational Church. We're going to try to help you with that. We're going to have one-on-one -on -one face-to-face -face mentoring. I've got guys standing in the wings right now that want to help you get there. That's very nice. And of course, we're all at a different pace, are we not? Some guy's been around the Bible a long time. Some guy's not so long. Okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll sort of create the pace. So I'm saying about these disciples, you know, if they got this thing figured out, it includes the scripture. Just thinking about the thief on the cross. Remember these guys? <clears throat> There's a thief over here hanging on the cross. There's a thief over here hanging on the cross. And Jesus is hanging in the middle, right? Now, what a contrast. This guy over here says... Yeah, if you're the son of God, get yourself down here and get us down too. I don't believe you're the son of God. This guy over here said, what an idiot. He recognized, I know what's going on here. And he said to him, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He said, here's, and Jesus said, Today, you'll be with me in paradise. This guy over here, not a word. He didn't say anything to him. I'm just saying, when you're hanging on a cross, you got nothing to lose. Am I right? Yes. I think that's where you guys are. You got nothing to lose for crying out loud. You already lost most of it. Why in the world not embrace the only hope that there is? And finally, end up in your own brain and say this to yourself. I'm just passing through here. This life is so temporary. Why in the world am I investing myself in it? Why in the world is this the center of my world? Why in the world am I letting this life take me down? <laughs> We're just passing through, fellas. There's an old uh, hymn we used to sing. It's kind of a cute little ditty. It says, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures, they're laid up somewhere beyond the blue. 
And the angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't live in this old world anymore. Quit living for this world and start living for the next and your life will get better in this world. You believe that? Anybody believe that? That's the way it works and I'm trying to help you. So here's how this works. We have to get to the place where we say, okay, I, all right. Not, not this guy. I don't believe, I think, it's got to be this guy over here, right? Lord. And that denotes something, doesn't it? The word Lord denotes rulership, authority. Lord, remember me when you enter your kingdom. I want you to be in control of what life I have left. It's not much, but I'm giving it up. That's a good place now, I'm saying. That's a good place to be. And here's why I'm saying this. You've got nothing to lose. Everything to gain. So our routine in this class is to, we're going to all bow our heads in a minute. We're going to pray, and we're going to ask the Lord this and tell him that. Lord, I, 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 I give in. I, I, I give up. This is what I need. I want, to, I want in on this. Maybe it makes sense to you. Maybe it's not. Maybe you're trying to figure it out. I don't know. But I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. And it's not about the words. It's about what goes on in your heart. So let's bow our heads. What do you say? And I like to do it like this. When you got your head bowed and your eyes closed, here's what I want you to do. I want you to picture Jesus in your mind. What does he look like? It doesn't matter. Just You're going to talk to him right now. And here's what you should say. Something like this. <clears throat> Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I'm sorry for my sins. And the best I know how, I accept Jesus as my Savior. I know I can't save myself. So I'm trusting Jesus to save me. I need you in my life. I need you in my heart. I need you in my heart. I need help with my addiction. I need help with my addiction. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus name.